check out Nicole then. So, hello, sister. Right timing. Yeah. I was squeezing everybody to try to share. Nobody wanted to share. So, squeeze, squeeze. Uh, unfortunately, I'm sorry. What's that? Well, you're breaking it out a little bit, so. Your connection breaking it out a little bit, so. Well, I will invite you to pray for us if the connection is good. Desire to have a connection with us. I I am in an in desperate need of you and that connection. Mm. There's not of other other things that I need in my life right now, but you and your presence and all that you have to say and teach. Mm. For such a time as this in this in this place where I don't know if it's human nature or an, an enemy or what it is, but the fact that something seeks to destroy us can sometimes feel heavy and uh, mm. it feels heavy right now for me in my life. And I just want to rise above it because there's somebody that you say that I am mm. and that is yours. And it is a position of a daughter mm. in a Royal family, mm. a daughter of a creator. The daughter of one who loves so deeply that his son would come and just ransom mm. with blood. And that is a no small feat. It is no small thing that was done for me. And I just want to see it change me. Mm. I want to see so desperately human nature fall away, like scales falling away. Mm. And truth because there are so many lies to listen to and I just not be like do you believe a lie more there's just a different life you had planned relationship between a child and their father there's such a difference and this world has not produced it mm. this world has done the opposite father and and thanks be to you you want to reconnect that again and i just need and want every single part of it and everything to do with it yet it feels like there is a huge chasm between it so mm. Lord, as we continue to just follow you and humble ourselves, Lord, to your plan and your wisdom and your will, I just ask for a breakthrough. I ask for relief and I ask for um, just hope and faith. And I just thank you that you have a people here that are an example and are a, a leading way. They're a leading way is what they are, a leading way for all to follow to be like you. And I just ask for a blessing for them because of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. Mm. On the prayer, a lot can be shared, but uh, we do pray for you, sister. <laughs> Sometimes on the water is not a bad thing, okay? <laughs> it's easy to say, however, hard to endure. Um, I have to smile at you because, uh, mm. um, I think Sister Prim might, might have some counsel for you, but let me, uh, share certain things with you, uh, as if it's a Q&A, okay, so, 
I think last time conversation carried is how to enter the presence or remain the presence of God. You think、um, if I remember the conversation carried, I um I I I shared the presence of God can means different thing for different people and different uh, uh different allowances. You know,、uh, accessibility, if you will, for the presence of God, He does manifest or choose to reveal to the creation、uh, in different ways, in different realms. Rather,、uh, it's very simple. You know, when you don't, you you done away with the religious vocabulary or imaginations, man. You you think about、uh, a invisible. Almighty, all self-sufficient. We love to use that word, and but omnipresence, God. Am I right? He's omnipotent. Also, his word. I don't use the theology to back those up. I'm talking about the general word. That basically is everywhere. He's all knowing, and is all powerful. This being, if you will, and it created everything. <clears throat> Created the things that have a conscience, or the mind, or don't have a, a conscience.、Um, that's different.、Um, even that can be differentiated in different ways. Am I right? So, for example, plants are different than the insect. Am I right? So the insects, however, live by the intuitions. It's not like a a bird. You know, I was looking. Taking some fun, watching some birds, you know, some bird being saved, rescued by someone, and this is forms and bonds, you know, so sweet. Or can dog do that as well? So you can see different creatures basically responding to God differently. Now in the Bible, God uses. The the different character bits, you know, different kind of animal basically, to symbolically indicate personalities or personal traits. For example, the twelve tribes, am I so? <laughs> so the four creatures before the throne of God. Now there are different people have different interpretation, but he simplified it. It will be、uh, entity he created. You and I as a creature. Now, on the surface, in the realm of man, we know that Saul is better than David. Am I right? David has some of the Saul is shorter by a normal man, but look, God look at the heart. Therefore, there are differences. Am I right? We know that story. But let's go further. So, what then is a heart of David? We translate. Through different experiences, different teaching, different、uh, understanding about David's life in different realms,、um, in different color, different shapes, am I right? So different needs, which is all given by God and satisfied the pursuit of man to take David as example or as a testimony for their life. You know how to build a solid relation with God. But then you look at、uh, who David really is. In considering, he is a perfect son for his forefathers. You, a son of Abraham, a son who uphold and exemplify the law of Moses through his rule. Then you see his.、Uh, He's also a father, am I? To multiple sons, the change of a shifting character in a sense, and role play. In this life, he become a somehow like a God the Father, a different kind of sons. <laughs> in a sense, like Jacob had different kind of sons, am I? Some good, some bad, and the deal was it. But eventually, he established code to code. A perfect son, and、uh, so there is some shifting there. I learned from there. So in 
in a sense, he is a product of the fruits of the past testimonies. He is also a fulfillment of age-long desires. He is also one who is able to pass on that blessing in a look far beyond his own generation, from the past, looking to the future, I mean, even of Christ and his kingdom. Now then, you look at David's life from Christ's eyes. He is a son of David. And the Jewish people who welcome him as a Messiah, they have an idea what the son David, we know the disciples from the time entertained what the son David he was supposed to be. And Jesus knows exactly what kind of son David he is. Um, my point is that Jesus is looking at one character, you will see the different facets or accessibility God allows for different age of mankind, different seasons for a man, right? Like Peter will go through different seasons. Then different angles looking at David, who he is, and right, you know, Peter recognizes a different story, for example, he's a, said David is a patriarch, and right? he's a, a prophet, above all, he's a foreshadow of the Messiah, and he predicted the coming of the Messiah, I mean, the, the resurrection of the Messiah, David is dead, but Messiah is resurrected, now he's with us, that's not just uh, for Peter, uh, something he revel revelatory knowledge to him. It's not just uh, something, aha, finally understand the scripture and, and why David existed, why David was given, and why Jesus Christ being the Messiah, being the fulfillment of those prophecy or predictions, if you will. What I mean is that his backdrop is not the scriptures. His backdrop is a living way of God. The, 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 the real plan of God, if you will. Through human beings, through the generations, came to be fulfilled. And Christ here, his teacher, the one who truly is the word, created everything and finally recognized he is the one he's supposed to be. And he is offering him a choice. His choice would be you can assess God, worship God, in the, and know God, and uh, have a touch his presence in a sense. In the traditions, you brought our ways. Or with the living way. And the living way fulfill all scriptures. The scriptures are testimonies, enlightenment, leading to that recognition of the living way is in Christ. You know, it's his word life before him. In a sense, Peter, the one who went through all these shiftings and right, this transformation, understanding has to just, uh, go through great trials, and his trial was, uh, was devastating for him. And that's what I propose to you. That is really what is going through with you. It's not necessarily your personal failures or personal, um, you know, the, the the seasons of life, it's, it's where, where your soul, your human essence in a sense, begin to allow by God to gain insight, to gain knowledge of Him in a realm that uh, you're not accustomed to. It's not uh, like uh, Sister Prima's uh, Terrible there. It's, it's, it's a, you know, you, you, you eat what you become, right? You, you become what you eat. <laughs> you, 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 you're partaking in a sense 
have accessibility began in a different realm. The food then, the 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 source of food, the provision for your satisfaction you will be different. I think actually yesterday Brother Duan Stewart shared a, a word enlightening and a very timely word in the talk about from which table you came from. Now Oftentimes, this is so blurred in us. And this is a simple example. You know, you see different cats, you can have different characters. John knows that very well. <laughs> so, and you have to treat the cat differently, right? So they all love in can. You all, you know, have a beautiful relation with the can. But you have to deal with the can in the way uh, that it was created, in the way that he's brought up with. Some are maybe traumatized, some may be spoiled. You know, in the upbringing, but eventually you have to learn to to simmer the can down in the sense to the culture. Uh, you try to include that can in as your family member, you know, as your 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 can, you know. Then the each season or, you know, if the can change ownership in a sense, what have you, they're going to go through this transitions, am right? So you. You sometimes struggling with more than a cat, his habits or his uh, temper. You struggle with a whole way a whole damn can to stay for three years in another family. You know, it's should he eat a certain time, certain things, should he play with the dogs or not? Those are rules you know that uh, or, or those those uh, those uh, uh, those things you just naturally detect, you know, while you recognize you wrestle with the can, the can never hung around with the dog, and you eagerly want the dog to be a friend with the can. You suddenly recognize, well, that's not that the can don't like the dog, it because maybe in the past few, all the culture that can came from, they just don't allow dogs to hang around with the cans. You know, it become a, a discipline to the can, a confinement to the can. So I'm talking about these things. Now, project that in your human being, in your knowledge of God, in your accessibility to God, in the sense how to define you have entered His presence. And His presence can mean so many things, right? Can mean so many things. I mean, that's every sense of God in the Bible. They have different levels or different temperament in encountering God. Now, one great dilemma, oftentimes we uh, either over-explain it, or we just brush aside, not explain it. For example, turn with me to Deuteronomy 30. Two. I'm sorry to, you know, I'm, I'm posing my own questions to answer your own questions. <laughs> to answer my own questions. But it's about how to find this place of a true stability in the Lord. And that stability is not a stagnant thing. It's, uh, it's all powerful. It's a uh, uh, I think it's, uh, there was a sister, sister Pocky Dev's wife, uh, pretty much a friend of her Amy, so recently shared a very interesting message about her coming into the center of God's power. You know, she quoted something uh, of uh, the, turn with me actually, let's turn to it, look at it. There's a mystery here, it's a hidden. But, you know, when you encountered such a thing and become uh, uh, the backdrop, if you will, for you to exercise, uh, you know, um, what, seeking the Lord, you know access the Lord then you have different uh, 
uh, discipline or different orders going to be required of you. You know, um, um, anyway, I don't want to exa uh, expand on that. I just wanted to give you a, something about three. Here, Habakkuk 3 said, in three, the latter part two, uh, three said, in, in two rather, Lord, we heard your fame, withstanding all of your deeds, the thing you do, renew them in our days, so the call of a cry, often time people do revival, mention this, in our time, make them known, in wrath, remember mercy. So this, what is this moment? This is the highest moment, is when Moses is on the mountain top, isn't right? So, in the 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 Habakkuk have a revelation for that. You know, his glory covers the heavens; his praise fill the earth. And the part of three now, his splendor was like the sunrise. Rays flash from his hands. Where his power was a hidden. Uh, here the, the prophet said, Show us your power. Do mighty thing for us. But almost die as a dilemma, he also recognized God's real power is a hidden. You know, it's 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 a withdrawal from the deeds he done in the midst of man. In a sense, you can see this perfect to uh, to in nutrition God's presence. Evidently God did many things on earth and is present. It's his work, his handy work. Am I? He he talks, he instructs, he did many things. But all that is almost like a, 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 a inspiration for man, a, a starting point for man to be lifted off from the confined and natural way of life and to go where he is. And where he is, that is a different kind of presence. It's a will, in a sense. It is. Uh, a common Paul said no flesh blood can, can enter the kingdom of God it's not more than a sinful man per se it's that that man built up a natural glory or lesser glory he is not allowed to enter or access a deeper thing the Lord now that is a very very contrary to uh, because like mysticism is contrary to <laughs> the, the normal Christian thinking, you know. So, but you have to encounter it. You have to have the encounter. Then you will uh, know the difference. Uh, that's where you are. You are yearning for those encounters. As a Lord have give accessibility to all of us for sure but somehow some we we like peter and right we project the encounter with god in certain light or in certain uh, traditions certain endowments we believe those encounters are meant for certain purposes and uh, there lies the the, the need for counsel, you know, for serious counsel. Um, um, oh, um, the counsel is a settlement, if you will. You know, you just know where you are in the in the in the arrangement God, uh, and the season where you are. So you settle in your inmost being. You strive enter his rest. It does means. You 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 don't know where to go, you know. So you know where to go. You know there's a place of rest, and there is a free final fulfillment, and you know the way how to get there. String forward, Paul said. String forward, you know. For this reason, I'm string forward. He knows his goal. He knows a path. 
Um, therefore, your sh the, the struggles will not be uh, 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 scandered away. You know, it's a rather go through a burst pain almost, you know, so you go through the narrow path, but not, um, um, you know, disoriented, if you will. I like the word that's been came to my spirit recently as well. You're not, you're not troubled as if God is not with you, and you're not getting anywhere, and you're wrestling your in, over your own life, over this this life in the world, and wrestling you with know, well, evil powers is uh, is useless, you know, is a, is a defeated, whatever. But you rather know, no, I will endure this. I will go through the valley of the shadow of death, but I know. The, the staff, the Lord is leading me, you know, the, he is my true shepherd. Now, that being said, turn with me to to verify this a little bit, back to Moses' encounter in Exodus 32. Um, turn again to a teaching. I hope this is more than a teaching today for you, but a place of a clarity. When you see this kind of thing, the wheel of a mind begin to take off begin to take off uh, 33 chapter rather so turn with me to to 11 so when God stations a pillar and he allowed most of the pieces of tent you found that this place has the tabernacle the ark is not set up yet am right so so, but there is a meeting place. Eleven said, it's called the tent meeting. Eleven said, the Lord would speak to Moses in that place, face to face. Face to face. As a man speak with his friend. Wow, a man speak with his friend. And Moses had a lot to speak, am I? He, will, he was a judge. He was a leader for a great people. A long affair to take care of. So what he do? He, he get there and he arrange those things out. You know, he will make a sound judgment. And, um, well, that's wonderful for the man to have this privilege. And God will give him counsel, give judgment about every affair bring to the Lord. I try to tell you. But Moses don't know the way. Moses has not asked God or understand God is different kind of God. It's not like other gods. You know, you can just go to this idol, go to this God, give you a, a oracle, give you a solution, give you what to do the don'ts. God, yes, he uh, commanded Moses, commanded the people desire because that's their idea of what the Egyptian God will do, other God will do. He allowed them to stay in that limited place and the willing to lower himself, if you will, confine himself so that he can be helpful to them in the capacity they could receive him. You can see Jesus did the same thing with disciples. I tried to say, I'll tell you the same. Now that is great mystery of God. Is God patiently waiting for us? And then you will see when He's intended to engage with you with greater capacity or greater um, horizon, if you will, or um, a greater level. Well, he had to trouble the man, he had to trouble the people, he had to trouble the situation in a sense for things to be, uh, to be, um, you know, the yearning, the seeking, the desire begin to be imprinted or you know, almost like a branded in the heart, in the, in the human soul, you know. It, oh, he deeply troubled them. He gave such a, a unquenchable yearning and desire. Uh, that's 
that's what you have. Or Arbor City, that's what you have. You want to know the true God. And you want to find Him in the true fulfillment. That is, that is something God is, is delighted with. But you might think this is because you are insufficient, you can handle your life, you handle things in a, in a good way. There may be truth on that, okay? That's maybe part of the reason of your trouble. That I'm, I suspect that's not me the reason. So, anyway. So God spoke to Moses face to face in this place. Then, you know, Joshua now hung around. Then you know the story when Moses comes to the top, he asked God, said, hey, you know, all those people, it's, it's a huge burden to me, you know? So I don't know what to do. I mean, if I found a favor with you, can you tell me who is you sent to help me? You know, who is you sent to help me? And um, let's see, let's see in 13. If you are pleased with me, Teach me your ways, so that I may know you, and continue to find the favor with you. And God said, well, great. He said, my presence will go with you. I will give you the rest. No, he has no rest, basically. My presence will go with you. I will give you the rest. You know, it's basically a place where... They were rested. I mean, they always rested when God is rested, choose the rest. But evidently, God is warning Moses to go further. Then Moses said, If your presence doesn't go with us, don't send us up there. That's where it's scary. You know, God don't with them anymore. In the whole world, anyone know that you're pleased with me and with your people unless you go with us. So that is one level. Uh, for conversation, you know, the grade, okay, go with us, please. What else would this with me and your people from all that people on the face of the earth? And God will assure to this unrestful heart, a fearful heart. God is that God, you know, most cannot control, and He is mighty. If we don't do the thing He promised to do, their people will be scandered and be slandered. They will be city you know, perish. And then the Lord said to Moses, I will do the very thing you have asked, because I am pleased with you, and I know you by name. So after that, so one tear settled. Moses' soul is settled. Settled and God will never abandon him and the people. He will always go with them. In our life, that is important for us to know that God is with us. Amen? God is with us. God is for us. In the depths of our soul, when that is settled, only when that truly is settled, sister, if you are there, I want to, I want to pray for you. When that is truly settled, and that settlement, you can see, it cannot be granted by miracle signs because most held that. It cannot be granted by this personal encounters. You see, most handle all that. It cannot be granted by the 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 fact that God is always do things. You know, give you a solution instantly, like Moses already had that. It, it granted only in a place of trust. At this point, God trusts Moses, but Moses has not learned to truly trust God. He just don't know this God. He do his biddings, he sacrificed life for his purpose, he did whatever he was commanded by God to do, am I? So, and he was a faithful and a humble man. He didn't do things that in his own imagination, wow, well, he's, he's a proportion in a sense, am I right? So, but there is something inside of Moses has not encountered a God, his presence, if you will, his glory, in the way 
of counsel. Okay, counsel. Now this spirit of counsel is what Jesus promised to the disciples. He said, when you know the counselor, we usually translate it as a comforter or healer or whatever, you know, it really is not about that. It's a counselor in a sense because uh, you see the spirit revealed the conviction, let's not use the word of conviction per se, that's all evangelical theology, okay? Conviction of sin, conviction for judgment, conviction of righteousness. That conviction is almost like you got a sinner, you got to acknowledge the truth is, a set of doctrines. Do you agree with this? This is the ultimate truth, you know, absolute truth, God will give to you. You know, no, those are not the convictions. In the sense, teaching a sinner. The target was not a sinner. You see, the spirit in this destination, the Lord interested in, and, and after the disciple already repented, all they followed, and then he said, the spirit is going to teach you all things. And it is not about merely convicting a sinner, woe them of the future, judgment, all those kind of things. So what then? They believe that. They follow that. Am I right? So I'm just giving you some a simple example. But this is our church of theology. We have carried on for generations till today. It's a strongholds, literally strongholds. Because when you have those strongholds, you will use the work of the Holy Spirit for the different purposes. You're not to see the education of a spiritual sonship really means for spiritual man. Uh, it was, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, um, so then what is conviction? Back to this conviction. So evidently it was not conviction to, to, to convict a, a conscience for a sinner. It is uh, the firm teaching, the inscription of the law of God on a new living heart. And that conviction is not conviction sin in the way evangelical prescribe it. Then what it means? It's literally the book of Moses, uh, Romans begin to open up for us, am right? There are the law, love for sin and power, am right? Make man not capable to be a son of God. Now, once we understand that, now we are free from that economy, or that we are alive, we can be convicted, not quite convicted, it can be taught. The Spirit will inscribe the law of God on my heart of the Spirit. The Spirit will teach me all things. He will give me the way of the kingdom, the way on the kingdom of righteousness, on the kingdom of peace, on the kingdom of love, and joy functions. How it works. How it works. Now recognize this. When Jesus said, the thing I told you and shared with you, they were preaching gospel, casting men, they did all that, am right? But yet you're not able to understand. When the Holy Spirit comes, he will reveal the thing to you, he will teach you, he will enlighten you on to those things. Now the first shadow is again in the time of the lawgiver. Amen. When God gave the law through Moses. And we know the law is not supposed to be on tablet stone. It's supposed to teach the people God's way. Yet they they still continue to subscribe to, in a sense, a lesser will of God. I'm speaking some very, very substantial things. And the, 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 the things that confuse us, as confuse them, and confuse uh, the mind of many devout and godly men, God-seeking men, is their understanding, as you just identified last week, God's Spirit and it was with you to ask no questions. What means to be in the presence of God? 
And here Moses have a, a different encounter. In the tenth meeting, he definitely had the presence of God, and God's presence was always with them. But it manifests and benefits the people in a very conditioned way, a confined way. He has not revealed his glory, his ways to the people. And this point 33, and God began to continue lure and, 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 and assure people, uh, assure Moses, or rather heal Moses, if you will. You know, you can see his soul is healed. His, his trouble, his fear, his uncertainty with the faithful God, the mighty God, you know, when he said, I will take care of that. You know, that's done. Don't worry about that. And he this he's then step ahead, you know. So oh if I found a favor in you, can I ask something else? The question is how he asked. Because to our discernment and our self awareness, if we examine ourselves, we have not learned the way to ask. Because God and you can see that God conditioned the disciples to go through things in order for them to ask the right thing or ask in the right way. And God conditioned Moses as a representative of all people to ask the right thing, ask in the right way. You see my point in this? And that's where we are. There are many of God remnant. They finally has a simmer down. They finally have recognized what they are truly seeking. And they will have an education. <laughs> They'll go through this time. The world is, is a stirring, and the age is, is changing. The heavenly realm is, is, is orchestrating um, events and release. Um, Forces, if you will, amen, to, 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 to produce this perfect incubator for the hearts of those that detect the Father, want, want, want a deeper substantial thing with them, want to bless them with that. He began to wounding, and there will be a mighty wonderful outpouring for sure, but it will different than Man thinks the other point, the power and the glory of God will be revealed in different way than the past. And I congratulate you, sister, you know, so the Spirit of God is working your heart in wounding those. And all of us, we have detection of it. We have different realms or different ways to do it. Now, I'm going to have, you understand the point, I mean, basically God, you know, Speaking to Moses, didn't speak face to face anymore, right? He, he, he said he got the cover under the cleft, you know, until I passed by. Uh, you know, you know all the teaching. My point in that there is another presence there. That's a presence Habakkuk saw. Is that presence is enough? That's a presence of Peter, John, and the other one, Andrew. I'm not sure which one the other. So, on the mountain transfiguration, is that good enough? Obviously not. Because you see, in Second Corinthians, God, start with me, let's read this as a summary. So, this is a picture of the vision recently. Bang, so. Uh, bang, I'm making sense to you, you know, so, is that encouraging? God write in our hearts the music, of his, uh, his writing, you know? Amen, <laughs> it's, amen, it's, yeah, it's, it's wonderful. It's not it's with human sure. human knowledge, am right? It's, uh, it's, you can use scripture, back it up, for sure, but it, it has to be real. It has become real. Uh, so, what, what do I have here, here? So, in 17, in 3 chapter 12 said, talking about different glories, but said, since we have such a hope, the hope of glory, we are very bold. 
were not like Moses who put a veil over his face to keep his life from gazing at it while the radiance was fading away. I don't want you to look at these things as a negative or comparison reading, okay? I want to read as, okay, Paul got something. Paul got it, you know? And he's eager to use all these examples to present it to the believers who already see the ministry. <laughs> they are the letter of the written in their hearts. Yet they have no contest. You somehow, some tradition, some imagination, some self, some some self subscription of worshiping God, knowing God, has a blurred or misinterpreted the thing God has been doing to them through Paul's ministry. Amen. Hallelujah. Is that true? Well, that true every time. When God deal with the people, it's always like that. Moses, the disciples, you and I, and right, we went through the those seasons. Some of us may still going through it. I propose to you that a good thing to be that a good place to be. It's not that you continue to be weird. I'm talking about there is a work in you while you're sleeping, a work within you. Has nothing to do with what's happening around you, and nothing to do with the events, the the, 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 the duties of life. It's something profoundly in the depth of your heart, and you don't know your heart. I propose to you, <laughs> the good heart. <laughs> the spirit grooms with our, you know. <laughs> Our mind don't understand. So when I say don't know your heart, it's not humility. I'm saying the truth. Your spirit, however, are willing. Your whole being are yearning and seeking God. And God knows on us on that. And He is answering that. But He's answering and fulfilling the desires in the way we might not a customer to. Or not being well educated about if you will so let's uh, go on back to three chapter so do not let look at this negatively but positively okay so so but their minds were made dull for this very day the same will remains when the old common is read it's not being revealed because only in christ it is taken away is that how you taken away positive You're taken away in christ now, what is this Christ? Why is not Jesus Christ in the anointing? And you don't get the anointing unless you're allowed to have access to something. You know, you go to the temple. You can't just eat the show bread. You can eat the meat, you know, on the altar. <laughs> and that's for your portion. But you can't have the show bread unless certain occasion allowed. That's not your daily portion. You know, but the one serves the altar, they always have their daily portion. Am right? You want to say my point? So, but the one who serves in the inner court, they have a portion to everything. Am right? So, then you go deeper, deeper, who can, you know, drink wine, drink oil, the incense, each represent a different substance. Now, I'm not talking about the mysticism or God's intent to exclude somebody. I'm talking about the, the holiness of God, the, the profession God, and the perfect arrangement God for human being like you and I to be perfected, to be orderly, positioned, if you will, you know, anointed to receive the things he deemed as holy and peculiar. There's nothing to do with comparison, it has to do with the, this is a pleasing thing of God to show a culture of honor, order, and favor. You know, he's a king. <coughs> he does not do things disorderly, you know, or dis 
without the proper culture in a sense. Now, when this is taken away, the anointing comes will teach you all things. Those things is about your word glory. Your word glory. Look at this. Even to this very day, Moses read it, the will covers my hearts. But whenever anyone turned to the Lord, the will taken away. Now the Lord is a spirit. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is a freedom. We we ask, what this means? This is not a born again experience talking about. The author is talking about the law, the covenant. The tabernacle, ta tablet stones, I mean, the Ark of the Covenant. He was talking about almost have a bad job, the temple set up, and right, the tabernacle set up, you see. And we, with unwilled faces, all reflecting Lord's glory, are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which come from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Where is it? It's the Holy of Holies is still a shadow of type. My point, if you can sum it up, is you are created to to belong to him. And in the process you're seeking him, in the journey you're seeking him, he will accompany you, he will make a banner for you, he will even allow you to build an altar, a temporary tent for him. But those are still a journey. A temporal setup, but through the Son, the Christ Jesus, the Spirit, the Most High God, is giving you the final liberation of freedom. And He has the law. As I'm speaking, may the Lord bless you with a, with absolute confidence of the power of the Spirit. And the, again, this presence, this is the power of the Spirit manifest uh, operate in different ways. Let me just identify what is so easy. It's through the impartation of divine wisdom and through the process of working on divine counsel. And on divine counsel, the spirit counsel, the spirit of wisdom. Then you enter through these things, you enter the mind of Christ. And the mind of Christ is a, is a very intriguing thing. We're going to talk about this later on when we talk about other things. But I want to wrap it up. And I wanted to, uh, if possible, have a Sister Prima to help us to bless Sister, uh, bless his sister Nicole. Uh, I encourage her, you know, she is in a good place. You might want to wear external evidence is not quite there but i believe the brokenness the 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 contrite heart is a word